Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel for another Marvel Contest of Champions video and in this one we're going to be taking a look at Rank 4 War Machine. He is my newest Rank 4. I was really excited when BG3 at SSX asked if anybody had a Rank 4 War Machine for defense because he is tactic. And I was like, yeah, I'll rank this guy. I loved this guy at rank three. I was pretty early on him after the buff. I think I even grinded for him to get 20 levels on his dupe back in the day. And I am very happy because he will be a defender this season, but in the future, I think he could be an attacker. And we're just gonna see him absolutely own this 8.1 lane. There's some more difficult defenders as it goes. And we're also gonna take Ebony Maw boss. So if you wanna fast forward to that, uh, that in itself is pretty impressive um, and he's got some tools there. So this has a weapon node and what you have to do is stun them, which that doesn't sound so hard, right? But no, it also has um, combat deja vu prowess. So that means when you repeat actions, they get prowess. And then depending how many prowess they have, they will get a um, disorient on you, which obviously means you won't be able to stun them because of ability accuracy. So the way we played this fight is we did uh, light, medium, light, medium combos, special to get the armor break, and then we just have fun because all we have to do is spam special ones to remove the prowess. Heavy attacks are gonna refresh all our debuffs. It puts the suppressions on him, so that's how we were able to kind of heavy in the corner. And then, you know, the weapon node is just supercharging us and our damage. Um, and the damage over time from the ruptures as well. And basically between that and the synergy team that we have, which is just giving us extra attack and his pre-fights, which make him even more tanky and give him more attack and longer debuff duration, this fight is gonna be fine. <laughs> now that was Beast, right? So Beast is, is a walk in the park. This fight has a little bit more going on. He's got a little bit of resistance. We can't throw the same specials back to back. Otherwise, we will get a permanent cross fight on us. And of course, he has the ability to evade. So we have to treat this fight a little bit differently. And we just know it's going to take a little bit longer. So I accidentally proc one of the prowesses early. And in order to deal with this, um, I do throw a special two and we're just gonna have to hope that it falls off and it does in time. So we did have that fall off, which means we were able to uh, parry, get rid of the weapon node again. And as I said, we need to alternate specials and we did mess that up because he has a very high chance to evade uh, those projectiles. Now, we're also gonna get a sense of how tanky this guy is. His armor is one of the biggest armors in the game, and we also have the energy resistance pre-fight. So right there, the game glitched a little bit, which I think is how I got hit by that. But look at this shock, we're healing off of it. This is an Act 8 opponent, and we were just healing off of that shock because of energy resistance and taking an entire special two to the face only took off 25% of our health. And with these debuffs on us, we're just gonna heal back up. So again, something happened there. I swear I didn't do this on purpose, but what we're getting is a pretty decent showcase of how strong that armor is. Really the only way to do massive damage against him is if they crit, because crits will penetrate through armor at like an 80% rate is what I believe. So those are gonna hurt if we get crit, but you know, because of these debuffs, we're getting all the way back up. Everything's fine. And I didn't have as good of a strategy on this fight because you know, the evasion, he is quite tanky himself. It's just gonna take a while. So with that, I'm gonna actually fast forward to the end of this fight because I think you've seen just about all you need. I am gonna heal back to full and then slowly chip him away as we have been doing. So enjoy the rest of the fight. All right, now that we've disposed of Reed with our special three, we just kind of had to get out of that fight. We're gonna see pretty much the most ideal matchup of a difficult defender on this lane. And unlike the previous matchups, on this one, I'm only going to be focusing on the special one because that is gonna be prowess removal. And between the prowesses from the node and the prowesses from his kit, we just don't want those things on him. 
so we start right off I do just kind of start hitting him uh, which maybe wasn't the smartest strategy but you can see this special one it removes all of his personal prowesses and all of the prowesses on the node which means he's not going to go unblockable we're not going to have to worry about the weapon node and that's basically going to be the plan the entire time here um, the suppressions are pretty good they really reduce his combat power rate we also have the Captain America tech synergy where once they throw a special, they go all the way back down to a bar of power. That's just gonna help us a little bit with the power control. But there, it didn't matter that he had some prowess. We got those disorients on us because all we need to do now is just hit him until he dies. He's not gonna ever get enough prowess to go unblockable. We get a nice dex of the special one there. Uh, the way War Machine works, when he heavies, it refreshes all of his debuffs, but that has a pretty long cooldown timer, so you do need to just watch that little heavy attack icon and make sure you know when to punish with the heavy. But yeah, that's one of his most ideal matchups, and you know, everyone knows Nimrod absolutely hoses Sauron, but I mean, that was as clean of a fight as you could ever expect against a Sauron, just because of how much of a hard counter he is there. So now we're gonna get into a fight that he doesn't really have a good counter for. I am going to put on the cleanse one, the one that's called support, which is going to remove two total debuffs from the fight. And that will potentially help if we get the delirium on us. Um, because we are gonna have to stun him here. Obviously, in an ideal world, I would be fine with just uh, you know baiting his heavies and, and hitting him that way. Uh, but because of the weapon node, we do need to stun him. So I am planning for there to be like a decent amount of light and dark energy in this fight, um, which means you know we may have to deal with reverse controls. But at least the first couple of times, you can see right there, we knocked him down. We took a little bit of dark damage. We got a delirium on us, but the delirium was removed. So this one, again, because it's a slightly more complicated fight, we are just going to be spamming special ones for now because we don't want to be like counting our combo and stuff. I just want to get rid of those prowess and deal with it that way. So it is about time to get rid of the weapon node again. So we parry and we're mostly baiting his special twos. For me, that's a little bit easier and you don't have to worry about the delirium that would come off of the special one. Uh, we still have one more cleanse charge, which means at some point we are going to be able to... Or actually, no, we did use it. So now you can see we are dealing with reverse controls. So I have to be aware of that and, and invert my dashes. Remove the prowesses again. Our damage is not as high simply because we are not uh, throwing the armor breaks. And we do have to take some of that dark damage. That's just because he's probably high sig and we just need to deal with that. There's not really a way for us to get around that. Um, again, just kind of trying to get one more parry in here so that we can disarm the weapon and bait another special two. And it's looking like we have a pretty safe finish to this fight and uh, not quite yet. Let's see, dealing with the delirium there, just being aware of it helps and one more combo he goes down so yeah war machine is hitting pretty hard he's controlling this fight you can see there almost all the damage was that dark damage off of his sig that was unavoidable but you know we did need to actually stun him which is why that happened we we couldn't keep him at zero light and dark energy all fight all right next up is one of war machines ideal counters again this is actually how i found this lane in the first place i was looking for a bishop somewhere in act eight and this was the one that i found bishop is one of his ideal counters because tech champions don't give him prowess anyway and he has the ability to remove prowess and then additionally none of his hits are energy hits which means that you can throw a special two you can throw a special one and you're never going to do anything like put a shock on him like Nimrod would or you know put plasmas on him uh, like Omega Sentinel would you just do physical damage and you never give him prowess because you're a tech champion so we we're just pushing him to his special two and we're gonna bait this out it doesn't matter if you tap the block real quick and now we have the armor break. This is traditionally how I fight Bishop. Like even in war, I would do it this way. And we did heavy ones to refresh. And then when you have the armor break, you 
guarantee to get all five of the ruptures. And we have the suppression, so you can see it's controlling his combat power rate. We don't want him to throw a special one. Um, notice I didn't put the cleanse things on me because if we did cleanse the incinerates, like let's say he did throw a special one, that would actually count as a punish against us and we would take some direct damage, which we wouldn't want. And now he's at a good amount of power that we can land, I think, five heavies in the corner. That's one of the nice things about the suppression. There, uh, we definitely made a mistake, but fortunately we didn't get hurt by it and he goes down. So considering we started the fight with about 75% health, uh, it looks like we basically ended right where we started. So there was no damage taken from a big bishop, essentially. Uh, it just shows how good of a counter he is. And now we have another fight. This one's kind of like Mr. Negative, where there isn't really anything War Machine can do here um, aside from just being War Machine. Now the cleanse is something we have to worry about potentially. We don't want to send her to the hunt. I do want to stun her every once in a while, but we have to kind of like keep track of when those will be. Uh, so that we can kind of get through this fight. So right there, we did get rid of the Disorient. We did get rid of the weapon, but she did cleanse it, which gave her three of her little Huntress charges. Uh, when we attack, she cannot cleanse, right? That's only on her attack. So that's why we're able to throw the special one freely. I mostly want to push her to her special two. And we are going to kind of treat this one uh, like the which one was it the sauron and the mr negative where we're not going to really get to our special two because i don't want to be counting combos i only want to be throwing special one getting rid of those prowess getting rid of the weapon node when we can and it appears that because of her cleanse or something the weapon node has gone away so again not really sure how that happened but somewhere in there when we parried and the cleanse did something the weapon charge is just gone so somehow that happened that's just one of those funky mcoc moments and the other thing we have to worry about is she has nine of her little huntress charges which means if we parry again then she's going to go into the hunt which means we might get smacked we don't want that uh, we do have some cleanse charges so you know that would potentially get rid of two bleeds if we needed it to um, but we're not even going to try to do that. We're just going to, because the game was so friendly to us, getting rid of the weapon node for some reason, we're just going to finish this out kind of how I would fight her in war, which is like no parries, just bait her specials. Maybe occasionally I'll try a sidestep, bait the special two, hit her block, let her heavy me, things like that, create the openings that way, like just traditional stun immune style. Uh, and, you know, believe it or not, this is the last fight on the path. So we basically use no items um he is sig 100 or so which means if we did get dangerously low he has a very substantial passive regen that can definitely save you in one of my earlier videos with war machine we took a flare path and it was a really good showcase of that because with flare we were hitting super hard but it's very difficult to sustain a champ that doesn't have regen like you know clairvoyant or rogue or something on a flare path uh, where you're not going to be able to top off your health. But with War Machine, because they're passive and everything, it's a really, really nice regen. And you also get an attack bonus when that goes on. And honestly, it's not the most important SIG ability to have, but it, when it comes in handy, it's really nice to have. You essentially increase your uh, health pool. Right there, we landed a nice sidestep, which sort of helped us get our final opening, and she goes down. So again, a bit of a slower fight because we didn't get to the special two, which is one of our big damage things. Um, and the final thing of note before we take this Ebony Maw boss is that he does have a special three rotation where you land two special twos and then a special three to get a massive fury. That has some potential in Everest content. But we didn't have to use it today because we went for his utility and he has plenty of damage even with just one armor break. So finally, this was, you know, often when I do these videos, I test out if we can take the boss and sometimes I die and then I'm like, eh, I'm not going to go back. We're just going to show the lane. But here we have Ebony Maw with Cascading Failure, which is the old AQ node. So we can't 
crit that much, which I don't think we will unless if our special one crits a million times. We have running on fumes, which could potentially help us. It is critical setup, so we have to be careful to not do the same combo ender. And then it also has heavy hitter. So my plan is to just heavy him as much as I can because heavy hitter is giving us a massive increase to our heavy attack damage. Got a little lucky with these crits and with him doing medium lights. Um, but yeah, we just we don't want to get faltered. We don't want to have him nullify, but I'm assuming he's going to nullify a precision or a fury one time in this fight. And right there he does. I think that was a precision, and we run into that. So now I'm in a little bit of trouble, and I'm like, oh, maybe we can get a regen showcase here. Uh, but I am going to throw the special two just to increase our damage. And then somewhere in the middle of this fight, I wanted to test... Uh, what exactly is my heavy range and it turns out my heavy range is quite long <laughs> because um, first of all notice that our heavy attack went from 50k to 80k once we had the um, the armor break on but yeah look at this heavy man I know for sure there are a lot of science champs out there like overseer uh, who it's not so easy to counter his heavy with a heavy and have it connect you know but this one is connecting every time and because of that we're not worrying about falter or anything uh, even though we do have uh, some ways to deal with the falter because we had the cleanse and stuff like that but yeah we throw a special one we get our guaranteed ruptures and I'm loving this heavy counter thing it means even if he doesn't do medium light even if we can't re-parry we're always going to be able to connect these heavies and then now it's just easy game it's over uh so that to me right there is a hidden piece of utility for this guy and I know there's other champions like OG Iron Man that have that same animation but dude that heavy reach is absolutely crazy and it totally shut down that ebony maw and we took him down so i hope that this is some bit of a showcase for you to show you that war machine is actually a very legit attacker he's a good enough defender this season that i'm very glad i ranked for him let me know your thoughts do you think this guy can cut it with omega sentinel with nimrod is he just a niche champ I personally think he's quite fun and he's going to be a really good attacker in the future. So thanks for checking out my video and I'll catch you in the next one.